Hello, and welcome back to TechMaker. In this episode, we're starting a new series to help people familiar with web development dive into the Ethereum blockchain. There are a couple of different aspects of development when it comes to blockchain. The first thing you have that's obvious is writing code that actually runs on the blockchain, and we'll get to that in a little bit later series. In this episode and in this series, what we're going to talk about is a different piece of it, which is integrating with code that's already running on the blockchain. This is going to be a very critical component for web developers to learn as more and more projects begin to integrate with the web and with mobile applications. Okay, let's dive in. So the first thing that I wanted to discuss is this concept of what's known as an RPC. So I just did some Googling around for what is an Ethereum RPC um, for images that might help explain. And I, I would encourage you to do that if this doesn't make sense to you. But essentially, this image was does a decent job. Um, what you have is you have the Ethereum network itself. You have inside of that, you have a bunch of nodes um, running that are everywhere. So it's not one server, it's databases and servers all over the place, basically, in web development terms. And the way that you talk to an Ethereum node, or client here as it's written, is with this library called Web3 over something called the JSON RPC, which is a remote procedure call. So it's very similar to an API, but instead of one server, you have an RPC for every node, potentially. So What's interesting about this is you can actually set up a copy of the Ethereum blockchain running on your local computer and then you talk to it over an RPC, sort of like running an API on your computer and then just talking directly to the API on your computer. I'm not going to do that in this video because it's a little bit time consuming and, um, and it's also a lot more work up front for you, so we're going to start with a little bit simpler way, but I wanted to at least introduce the concept. And I'm actually making a little bit of an assumption that if you're watching this video, you've done a little bit of reading on what a blockchain is and what Ethereum is in and of itself. So I'm kind of glossing over and doing a little bit of hand waving here, but that uh, should be okay. I won't hold you up from walking through this video and kind of testing this out. Okay, that said, let's look at where you can get yourself an RPC access. So there's this company called Infura that you want to check out. And so if you go to infura.io slash sign up, all you have to do is provide a name and email, check a few boxes, and they're going to give you an API key, essentially. And this is going to allow you to access their Ethereum nodes, their RPCs that they've set up, in the cloud or wherever for you, for you to be able to not have to set all this up running on your own machine. So once you do that, you'll end up on a screen like this where you see the API key and then uh, the different networks you can access. So just to point out, this is not my real account. I used a fake email address for this. I would encourage you to use a real email address. This is a real company and you should support them because they're doing good things. Um, by giving them your real information, um, but for the purposes of testing and not having to blur things out on the screen, I just used a fake email. Um, moving forward, so basically what you can see here is you have uh, an array of test networks you can work with. Now these have to do with, you know, when you're testing out smart contracts on the Ethereum network, you deploy them to a test network first. Typically they're real versions of the Ethereum protocol running. Um, but they're not the official main network. And that allows you to safely uh, test things out without having to use and lose real money. Okay, so keep this tab open because we're going to need some of this stuff. Um, I'm going to gloss over the next couple of points a little bit too because like I said, I assume you have some development experience. Um, you need Node. So if you don't have Node.js, download... Um, 8.11.2 or whatever the most recommended version is when you watch this video. Once you have Node installed, you will need Web3. And to get Web3, if you go to web3js.readthedocs.io, you'll find out how to do that. So we just installed Node, so you should have npm, so you can run npm install Web3 in your terminal, and you should be good to go. 
Okay, so once you've installed all those things, we can jump over to the terminal. Um, just a quick check, make sure you have node, npm, and then if you didn't already, you can run npm install web3, and that will get you going. Also, I want to apologize if the, click, if the clicking from typing is too loud. I'm traveling and I don't have a good microphone with me at the moment, which I'm going to try to resolve soon. So, once all of that's taken care of, we're going to jump into a node console by just typing node, and that brings us to somewhere where we can just execute JavaScript. So, the first thing we need to do is bring in our Web3 code. So, we're going to do that by saying var web3 with a capital W equals require web3 and if we look at our web3 object now you'll see that it has a bunch of stuff in here um, one interesting thing to point out if you're not familiar with this is the units of ether are stored here so for example one ether which is the currency that you see all the time on coinbase or whatever is actually 1 times 10 to the 18 way which is the base unit so there's no real decimal so if you see like 0 0.5 ether you actually have 5 times 10 to the 17 way it's sort of like the penny just a very tiny penny okay the next thing that we need to do is jump back in our browser and we're gonna grab this link to the main net that you got when you signed up for Infura so just copy that and we'll jump back into the terminal. Okay, so now we're gonna create an instance of our Web3 connection. So we'll say Web3 with a lowercase w equals new Web3 capital. And we're gonna pass in a string, which is our URL. So now we have a Web3 connection, which is, is actually hooked up to an RPC endpoint so that we can, we can do some interesting things. So the first thing to do that I always do whenever I'm looking at any kind of code in a sort of exploratory session like this is just look around at the methods. You can get basically the same information, actually the same information with details when you look at the, uh, the documentation, at least in theory, uh, if it's good documentation, which in this case I think it is. Um, Anyway, that gives you kind of a sense of what you can actually do. Once you've glanced around a little bit, you'll see that there's a few top-level modules inside of this uh, Web3. And the two that we're going to be concerned about right now are the ETH module and the utils module. So the utils have a lot to do with managing the numbers and sort of things you would expect to find in utilities. Ethereum has the, or the ETH module has to do more with getting information from the Ethereum network, interacting with smart contracts and that sort of thing. So in this episode, we're going to do one really simple thing, which is, or a couple of really simple things. We'll look at maybe uh, how to look up a balance for a particular address, which is kind of an interesting starting point. And then we'll see where we go from there. So the first thing to do that, so we need to call get balance and then we need to give it an address and a callback function which takes an error and then the number of way and then we'll console.log the web3 utils from way so we need to convert from way to either because that's how we want to see it displayed and like that now we're gonna get an issue here with no address I missed a nope I missed a parenthesis on the end Okay, so I'm getting an address not defined, which is expected. So we need to go find an address, and I'm going to show you how to do that. If you are at all familiar with Ethereum, you've probably spent a decent amount of time on Etherscan. If you're not, Etherscan is a really cool website where you can see all the transactions on the Ethereum network as they're happening, um, recent blocks that were mined, so on and so forth. 
you can drill down into particular addresses, transactions, see details about it. Um, we can see the balance of a particular address. Um, I just randomly clicked on this address and they have about $10,000 worth of ether. So let's, what I wanna do is basically get this address and verify that the number we're pulling back actually matches the number that we see here. So the first thing we need to do is just copy this address. And then back in the terminal, we can say uh, ver address equals, put that in tick marks, make it a string. And then we should be able to just execute this again. And we see it's got 14.9496, da 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 da. And back here in the browser, you can see Etherscan has the same thing. And what makes this interesting, if you're new to blockchain, is that in all likelihood, they're pulling this information from a completely different node through a different RPC. And so it just indica indicates that the information is the same everywhere. Now, you may be wondering, after all of this, like, how do you get yourself an account? Now, what I'm about to show you is not the best way, um, but you can actually, in Web3, connected to your RPC endpoint, just say web3 eth.accounts.create. And nobody should use these because now everyone on the internet has seen them and everyone should have access to the money. But you can create accounts endlessly, essentially, because there are an infinite number in theory. So that is it for this episode. I know that all of this is fairly basic and pretty straightforward. In the next episode, we're going to look at essentially how do we interact with smart contracts and read information back from those. So we're probably going to start with um, ERC-20 contracts because they're pretty standard. That's what all or most of the tokens that you see out there that are built on top of Ethereum are based on. If I have to guess, I would say we have two or three more episodes ahead of us about reading information from the blockchain. Maybe maybe even four or five. I don't know. I have to kind of figure out which direction I want to go. Um, after that, we'll probably get into how to actually write data to the blockchain, which is a little more complicated. And we'll do that sort of stuff on the test net with fake money because it's uh, obviously a more risky endeavor because you have to spend money to you know execute transactions and so on and so forth. And when you're learning, you don't want to be sending uh, real money away. Um, but anyway, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like, hit the subscribe if you're on YouTube, and um, I'll talk to you next time.